on a second opinion, uh, and then we will ramp up with in-person closet editing as soon as we are permitted to do so. Um, spring is the perfect time to organize your closet. Um, you'll have to take a day and get ready for the total closet cleanup. It's going to take two to five hours. Make a plan. Water or wine is a great on site. Is a must. Um, make a plan for what you need. Firstly, good hangers, and they should all be the same in your closet. This helps everything that looks better. Um, hooks, baskets. Um, if you can't have any, if you have a spare rack, it would be great because everything has to come out of your closet. If not, everything comes out and goes off the bed. And you have to finish it because you can't put it in until everything's on. Um, a mesh bag, I think, is a great idea. And this is to hang in your closet and you put um, at the end of the day, put your socks, your underwear, whatever small items, hang them in the bag. And at wash day, you just take this down to the laundry. That way, you're not going to lose those small items that sort of get lost in the, um, the hamper. Yeah, that's an awesome tip. And I think it's really important um, to make space in your day for this to happen. It's very yeah. time consuming. It's emotionally draining. Um, and I think what we all forget is that our clothes carry our energy with them. They carry our negative thoughts, our positive thoughts. They, they really absorb all of our energy. So it's really important that you allow space for that. And um, it'll be successful if you just really allocate enough time. So like Joanne said, the best thing to do is pull everything out of your closet because you really only want to put back into your wardrobe something that is going to stay in the closet. Um, and, I, and another point is make sure your closet is working for you, not your old closet is overtaking you. Your closet should make your life should be very easy. much easier, right? So you go for it every day and you just it's organized and ready to go. Absolutely. And I know that we preach this so much, but that's why cleaning your closet twice a year minimum, four times would be the preference, but also shopping using the formula. I know it's something we preach all the time, but it's so important and just makes getting dressed in the morning so much easier. You won't be overwhelmed. You'll never say I have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. It really makes the clothes, like Joanne said, work for you, not you having to work to get dressed in the morning. That's when the basic pieces are so important. So you go back to your formula once again. Exactly. So we're going to give you the screening on how to do it yourself. But like I said, we're always here to help you. Book a virtual closet edit with your stylist. Um, and it can happen in a few parts. So one of the things that we, I always really advocate for my clients is when you have the time and when you do the switch, if you're kind of unsure about if you're wearing anything, is to hang everything in your closet facing in the same direction. So all the hangers would be flipped, let's say, to the back. When you wear something, just take that and flip it forward. And if you wear it twice, if you wear it three times, great. You don't have to change the hanger. And then at the end of the month or whatever time frame you're kind of working in, just do an evaluation of what you have actually okay. worn and what you aren't wearing. And then what you want to do is you want to take those pieces that are still flipped, that essentially haven't seen daylight, um, and evaluate what it is about that item that makes it essentially stay in your wardrobe. Is it that it doesn't fit properly? Is it um, that you just don't feel that great in it? Is it that you have nothing else to wear with it? Uh, so let's try to figure out why you aren't wearing those pieces in your wardrobe. And again, that's something you can do with your stylist. You can try everything on. The stylist can give you tips and tricks of how to style it. Alterations are also a huge one. Yeah. And what I said to Rachel earlier on when we were talking about editing your closet is many pieces you haven't worn because you really can't find them and you don't know what they go with. Yeah. They might be great pieces that once you edit your closet and you put them in the order they should be in, you realize that it was a great piece and you shouldn't get rid of it. So the organization is very, very important and the plan. And then there's always those impulse buying that you shouldn't have bought. And we all have those in our closet. And I think during the pandemic, maybe some of the online shopping that has happened. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. 
Okay. So you have to oh, very item. Yes, yes, very item basis online. So you just have to go back to your the basics and our wardrobe. Nine equals basics. Yeah. So once you've pulled everything out of your closet, you're going to want to evaluate everything to make sure that it's in good condition. So it's not yellowing under the arm, it's not filling, it's not, uh, you know, seams or hems aren't loose. So you kind of want to give it a once over to make sure that it's in really good shape. And if you're unsure if it's in good shape, it's not in good shape. It needs to be cleaned up with either cleaning or with uh, alterations. Maybe it needs a few little stitches. Whatever it is, don't put it back in the closet if it's not in great, perfect condition. We have a few products here that will help you to accomplish this. And my most favorite products is the all-purpose bleach alternative from Laundress. This is literally the one-stop shop for cleaning laundry and house. It's totally amazing. You just dilute it in a little bit of water. You can even use it in your machine. You just soak your whites or anything that might have stains under the arm or stains anywhere. Soak it before you wash it. It's a really amazing product. I've even let stuff soak for a day or two if it really needs a deep cleaning. Um, but this is definitely, I would say, a must have this time of year to get it. And then I also, once a year, um, well, almost twice a year, take this and I even wash my walls with it, my floor. It's literally an all purpose product. So we really, really love this. Um, and then it's super important that you have all of your heavier sweaters, which you should be starting to put away for winter. And, uh, yeah, and if you watch my video I did, this is our great sweater stone. And the sweater stone, you should be doing all your sweaters. Don't put them away if they're all pilling. They should be washed in the cashmere wash, and then they should be depilled, and you put them in a cedar chest if you have it, or somewhere where the uh, you know they'll be well looked after during the winter. Not in a plastic bag. They shouldn't because they need to breathe. But these items are really wonderful to have. Well, you should everyone should have them because we all have cashmere sweaters. Yeah, I even use this again on my couch if my couch yes, starts yes. to pill. Uh, and anyone who has Marie St. Pierre scuba fabrication this or is, double yes. net fabrication, you can actually use both of these products on that fabric. So there is no wool or cashmere in them, but these products react beautifully with Marie St. Pierre's uh, more kind of elite fabrics. And then the crease release. Yeah, and then crease release and static solution are always just household staples. Um, I even love with the crease release, uh, you know, we don't love dry cleaning. We always prefer kind of to wash. Uh, Joanne has a great webinar that you guys can tune into about uh, caring for your products, but we always would prefer to wash a garment as opposed to dry cleaning. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but if you can try to, um, but what you can do is even just give your clothes a spray with the crease release when you take them off at the end of the day and just hang them up in your closet and they'll be smelling fresh and also crease free when you go to wear them next time. And once again, the um, I wash this blouse um, because it has the, the beautiful limestone detail. Um, but what again, I used my bag and I washed it in my bag, uh, in my washer, under delicate with, I used cashmere wash. Oh, you did? Yeah, and then it pressed up beautiful. So um, don't be afraid to buy because there's all kinds of um, many things with attachments on clothes right now. Embellishment. Embellishment. It's great. Um, the embellishment, you can wash it. There's no problem. Um, you just have to take care. And actually, I'm sure my clothes is much nicer than even the dry cleaning. Yeah. yeah. No. So yes. your clothes will last longer, especially whites. Whites won't yellow as quickly if you care for them at home as opposed to setting them. So, so that's this all part of the closet editing. Absolutely. Yes. It's the prep. It's, it's the prep, prep that you do before the closet editing. So at this point, you've taken everything out, you've given it a once over, and then you're going to start sorting it into piles. So you're going to have piles of keep, donate, and alter. And I think we all know what to do with the donate, and we um, all know what to do with uh, the keep. But the most important thing is alter. 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 Uh, your good alteration person or a great tailor is our best friend absolutely because it makes um, everything fit you it becomes yours and it's and we have great all we are very fortunate 
at Hangar 9 that we um, work with three great um, tailors, not yeah. alteration people, but actually tailors. So we can look after all those things. After you preview, you know what the problem is, call your stylist and we can arrange all of that. Yeah, perfect. or we can even work with you over Zoom to yes. show you what, you know, even just hiking up the hem with yeah. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I find it always so important for blazers uh, because sometimes I'll go into a closet and they'll have these amazing, beautiful blazers, but you know, the styles have changed, yeah. right? As time has gone on. So sometimes you just need to make a little tweak to the lapel, a little tweak to the shoulder, uh, the short the sleeve, just to make it a little bit more relevant for the time. So there's lots of things too that we can do to kind of bring new life to existing pieces in your wardrobe. And a very right now, the oversized blazer that we're just wearing is um, a very hot item, um, just because it's become not the suit, but the oversized blazer for fall and your it almost wears like a cardigan, but yes. you get the structure and the shape yes. of a blazer, oh, which I really, really love. So that's kind of the next step. And then you're going to want to prioritize your closet by things um, like like-minded things. So I personally like to organize, and I think you do also, yes, yes. like to organize your closet by category, color, and then length. So I will put all of my jackets together, organize them by color, but also by length. So all of my double-breasted would be together, all of my single-breasted would be together, um, and then outerwear and so on and so forth. Um, and what that really does is it helps you to see visually, because I think women in particular are super visual, but most people in general are visual. It helps you to see what you have a lot of. So for me, for example, it was a big eye opener when I put all of my leather jackets together to realize that I do not need another black leather jacket. Um, and that's something I gravitate towards. And you do the same with your shoes. So you organize them by heel height, color, and category. So sandal, boots, loafer, runners, whatever it may be. So that's the best way to get a really great visual of what you have. And then like Jan said, it really kind of makes you have a plan moving forward yeah, to create your clothing action plan, which is the final step of your closet edit. So what do you want? I mean, spring, we all need to get some new things for spring. It just, you know, that is just part of spring. Yeah. Right? But, you know, spring almost more so than fall. In a way. Does, yes. Fall has like a back to school kind of excitement around it. And spring is just beautiful. Yeah, it's just kind of fun and, yeah. you know, hopeful that by true spring, summer, we will be able to get out there into the world. So we've kind of gone through step one through three. So the final step then is really kind of to take the clothing that you're putting back in your wardrobe as a key and evaluating what tools or what items might be missing from that. So with your stylist, you'll create a clothing action plan that'll take you through the season. And a clothing action plan is really, really great. And we always recommend doing it per season, not overall. Um, and this, I would say, goes for the closet edit as well. Focus on just the season at hand. Don't try to do bang out like your entire wardrobe, all seasons at one time. Um, just concentrate on the season ahead, what you're going to be wearing in the next six months and work backwards from there. Yeah. And especially your, your evening wear and grab the line. Um, that's your, that's a separate line. Yeah, and coats and everywhere. And I would put outerwear. Outer yes. So just take them out of your closet, out of sight, out of mind. Um, and the nice thing about that too is when you go to reintroduce them back into your wardrobe the next season, they seem fresh and they seem new. Because even if you're not wearing them, you're staring at them every day. So they're going to feel old and kind of feel like something you maybe don't gravitate towards and want to put on every day. Um, and then the last thing would be is um, to kind of work with your stylist one-on-one -on -one to, to fulfill that, to create a capsule wardrobe that will get you through the season. So really great idea is to, you know, go through the steps yourself. So just to kind of give a quick recap, let me know if I'm forgetting anything. So you're going to take everything out of the wardrobe, put it either on a rolling rack or on your bed. Because like Joanne said, if you put it on your bed, you have to finish before you go to bed or you can't go to bed. So that's step one, give everything a once over, clean any items that might be soiled or pilled or whatever. 
that's step number two. And then take the heavier pieces and move them out of the work of the closet. Yeah. Step number three would be to sort into keep, donate, and alter. Step number four would be to create your clothing action plan. Yeah. So evaluate with your stylist how you're going to proceed in the next six months. And one thing usually every season is a new white gloves, new t-shirts, because they're the ones we wash the most, we wear the most, the underpants. We always have to upgrade. That yeah. is a definite upgrade. And maybe more in the spring, because maybe we're not wearing a jacket so much. It wants to get warms up. And this is in general, they absorb like oil and yeah, creams and perfume. They're against your skin more than a jacket. Yeah. And um, especially this season, um, I know we feel that we, we have been all locked up, but um, we're about a month ahead in our spring for this time. So, you know, it has come on us very quickly that, oh boy, we do need to clean our clothes. We do need to get, um, you know, up to date. But it's tough because one day it's warm, the next day it's cold. Yeah. And it's hard to have that balance. So, um, but leave a couple of sweaters out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I yeah. always like to do the heavier, yes. like, like yeah, or, or you can even think of by fabrication, like alpaca, yes. um, a mohair, yeah. like yeah. anything that looks really heavy. Uh, even if the temperature is right, you're not going to feel right wearing it. No. So you can definitely probably put away your mohairs, your alpacas. Um, what else at this point? Lighter weight cashmere, I yeah. kind of keep all, all, all year year around. Um, you were saying earlier that a double face full coat is it's kind perfect. of a must. And you must remember once you get everything out of your closet, then you have to turn the list and you should wash down your closet. Yes. Just to make sure there's no little testes. Yeah, well, keep in mind moths feed yeah. off of dead skin, hair, and dust. Yes. Uh, so, so you want to eliminate those from your work too. And honestly, it is, it takes two to five hours, but it could take. So take a break, like don't just do it in sections and take a break. You don't try and do all your drawers the same day. I would do the drawer by folding in my drawers another day. Um, because to do it right, to make your life very much simple going forward, um, it takes time. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a big job. And it's energy, not, it's an energy yeah, job, it is, for sure. It is, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so it's like, even when we're doing in-person closet edits, I always say to the client, like, don't book anything after me because A, I don't want you rushing to get to somewhere. Um, and yeah. B, you're probably going to feel like a big nine ounce glass of wine and put your feet up and relax after. But it's it true. feels so good. Like the energy you will get from doing this, your room will feel bigger, it will feel brighter, your clothes will feel fresher. It really is a great uplifting activity, which I think we all need right yes. now, yeah, for sure. And we have um, as the Many closets, um, and you go, you walk in, and then you go, Oh, where do we start? Right? And I mean, I feel very sad when I see tags still on clothes that they have bought and they've never worn. Um, and maybe that's online, or maybe you know, they're just in clothes or went out, and never go shopping without a plan. That is the worst. Don't go, I mean, you can go on a trip with a it's like so, waiting to grocery stores at a grocery store. Yeah, so why would you go to buy something if you don't know why you're buying it, what it is it for? You just see it, you buy it, you bring it home and put it in your closet, and there it sits okay, until the closet cleans. And then, but anyway, so just it's it, the plan is very important, and this is the perfect time to do it. Because yeah. right now, while we're, you know, you have the time, and even I know it's hard to get the children home from school, but maybe. Um, it's a friend to come in and just sit with them or you will meet them for me just to have this. Um, it's, it's a big job. Yeah. But an important job. Yeah. And like I said, we're always here to help you virtually during this time to do this process one on one. Um, well, I think that's all we have for you today, but we'll open it up for any questions. If anyone has any questions they'd like to ask myself or Joanne, uh, related or not to closet editing or any of these great products, please let us know. Or just talk to us. <laughs> that works too. Yeah, that works too. Okay, well, if there's no questions, 
And like I said, you can always email us, shoot us an email, DM on Instagram, whatever your digital preference, we are here to support you. We hope that you all stay safe, stay well, and happy spring, everyone. Have a great night. Happy spring.